and hello. I'm Michelle Shimp. I'm SBA's Acting Associate Administrator for International Trade. And I want to start by welcoming you to our National Small Business Week 2021 celebration and our panel discussions on international trade. Uh, I really am excited to talk to you about the benefits of exporting and some wonderful small businesses who are doing it right now. Um, these are the businesses are going to showcase to you their experiences and how they navigated and grew and succeeded in the global marketplace. So this is our first panel and we're going to talk to you about the State Trade Expansion Program or STEP. And our wonderful panelists include Stacy Moritz. She's the owner of Secret Aardvark Trading Company in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and she's going to talk to us about her tasty sauces. And Deborah Dudley, who is the president of Oscar Ware Inc. in Bonneville, Kentucky. Uh, and she, her, her grill cookware is wonderful. Uh, and then... From Team SBA, we have Eddie Mayen. He is the National Director for the State Trade Expansion Program. So, yes, Deborah, Stacy, I really want to thank you for participating in this discussion and sharing your business successes with us. Um, so, Stacy, you've got, you know, 50 recipes with secret aardvark sauces on your website. Um, can you tell us, you know, about Secret Aardvark Company and how you pursued exporting? So we're a hot sauce and marinade company uh, made in Portland, Oregon. We've actually got two plants, but we're out of we're based out of Portland, Oregon. Um, we started exporting simply because I had international customers trying to order sauce from my website. And when we looked at where those customers were, we realized that you know, I got a little tired of telling them no, I couldn't get that to them. So we started to look at how we could export to those areas. That's great. That's really great. And Deborah, not only are you an exporter, you were the Kentucky Small Business Person of the Year in 2017. Congratulations. Can you tell us about Oscar Ware and why, why exporting made sense to the, your company? We invented a product called the Grill Topper. And we grilled up a great company <laughs> right here in the small town of Bonneville, Kentucky. And here we make our signature porcelain coated toppers and our disposable toppers that allow you to grill everything delicious. That's who we are and that's what we do. And we're very proud that our products are still made here. We're still a family owned business. Our products are made in USA. We ship, manufacture, package all across from, from Bonneville, all across the USA into the United Kingdom. And through our relationship with the Army Air Force Exchange, we have our products in 10 other countries in the military retail outlets there. Uh, exporting for me uh, all started in 2014 when we were invited to be on a trade mission to the United Kingdom. Um, that was a, a tremendous opportunity for me. And I'm, I'd always wanted to export my products. I just didn't know how, but that gave me an opportunity to, to have someone help me get there. Doing so opened that door. The step grant helped pay for it. And I'll tell you more about step grant later, but one of the stops that was on the list for the trade mission to make was Manchester, Manchester, England. And in Manchester, England, one of the top big four retailers in Europe, it's corporate offices there. And I wanted that meeting. The name of the company was Asda. I wanted that meeting so bad and I wanted it. So I worked with the commerce team to help me reach out to contacts there that they could open doors to. But I also leveraged my relationship with my Walmart team here in the USA. And together I got that meeting. That was in 2014. And in 2015, we shipped our first container to ASDA. And we've been shipping them every year since then. So that's, that's how I did it. And thank you, SBA, for having me there. <laughs> 
Uh, and and so so we're here to learn about the state trade expansion program and you know talk to people about what it has to offer. So um, be both benefited from it. Stacy, do you want to share with us you know how how the state trade expansion program helped you? Well, like I say, I had customers. I, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, and so people were coming from Vancouver, BC, and buying product and taking it home with them across the border. And they wanted to be able to get it in Vancouver, BC at their local grocery store. So I, I had met uh, Business Oregon at an event here and they said, we have a step grant and we can help you go to a trade show. Because when you're in food, trade shows are really the way to get, to get your product in front of buyers and to get an introduction. And Canada has a different setup than what we're used to in the US and so, um, when I asked around, they said trade shows again were the best way to get yourself in front of in front of those buyers and in front of customers there. So I talked to Business Oregon and they gave me a step grant and I loaded my van and I drove to Vancouver for a trade show. <laughs> Wow, that's great. That's absolutely amazing. And and Deborah, I, I know you can talk a little bit too about the step and 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 sort of the bottom line. You've, you've used the program super creatively over over several years. I have, I have. And just just to 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 tell you how much I've used it since 2014, starting with the trade mission up until just last week, I've been reimbursed through the step grant for forty five thousand dollars over that period of time. That's a lot of money. And yeah. What I want to say, STEP didn't only just get me to the UK. After you start exporting, there's so many other expenses that come up. And some of those are driven from your customer. And for me, you know, it was the first year I had so much to learn. I had the support of the of commerce team, but I also had a lot of compliance things that I had to do for my customers, such as factory audits. Uh, there was security audits. There was a lot of expenses that came from just being compliant in order for me to do business with the customer there. And, and what I found was that STEP was there to reimburse me for all of those expenses, even the packaging changes that I had to make to the packaging on the products that ASDA was buying from me. That's continued year after year. Every year that we have continued to ship, we have been reimbursed for those expenses that reoccur year every two years, whatever. And it's a lot of money, but I'm so much more excited about what I'm doing today because with the virtual meetings last week, working with the commerce team here, I, I want to go big exporting. I'm so excited. Last week, sitting in this same chair in my pink office in Bonneville, Kentucky, I had a call with my commerce team in Mexico. And I had a call with my commerce team in Australia. That's why I'm so excited about growing my export business because a lot has changed these last two years. Traveling, we're not doing, but we have an opportunity to all meet each other here and not just here, but all over the world. And we have the resources through STEP. The reimbursements are there to help me get what I need to work with Australia, to work with Mexico, globalize my website. It's unlimited what is possible out there with the resources step and the teams that we have to, you know, just do it, make that connection. And that's how it happens. When you can connect, you can make it happen. That's amazing. You know, in conversations with both of you prior to this, too, I, I was really impressed that you shared that, you know, when we talked about how COVID affected your businesses and all. And both of you said about the same thing of like, it, it was hard to talk about with others because your businesses have actually really done well. And that, you know, not all have. And I think, you know, we know statistics that that it makes sense that exporters, you know, are more resilient because they diversify their customer base. And I just want to, well, you won't, you know, sing your praises on that. I did want to sort of note it because, um, you know, your companies, yeah, it, it, it's very, and I'm sure all your employees 
really appreciate that on, on uh, in your success. So now we get to advice. Uh, you know, clearly you've, you've tapped a lot of resources. You've, you know, taken advantage of exporting. Stacy, what 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 advice would you give to a small business now thinking about exporting, thinking about how to get more help? Um, don't think that you're too small. It, it really is. I hear a lot of companies and I just met one at a festival I was working uh, last week and they said, oh, we're too small to export. And I said, you're not. And you have if, if you've got a market for it, you have help. Reach out to the SBA. There's a number of organizations that can help you with food. It's it, it's a little different because there's other organizations as well that can help through the federal government. But the thing I found out about uh, Business Oregon is they were really great at saying, you know, you could also go to these, this group, and they have funds or they have a program or there's a class they have that they're holding right now um, that would help you export. And that's, I think that's the thing to remember is you're not too small. It will make a big difference in this global economy on your bottom line. And once you do a step grant, once you do one and you realize how how easy it is and how successful you can be with that, you'll do more. We've we've been to Australia with them. We've had, we've done a number of things through step grants. And I think that, you know, just just take that first step. See what I did there? Take that first step and and, and give it a try and at least reach out to the organizations in your local area and and see what they can do to help you. Many, many thanks. And Deborah, same question for you, your wealth of advice. Stacy pretty much said it all. The first thing, absolutely apply for the STEP grant and it, and it is easy. It is get approved. You know, it's there if you spend money in exporting and, in, and the next step is reach out to your commerce team and that through, you're going to have some expenses with that if you start the matchmaking or you start working with someone in Australia like I'm getting to do in, in Mexico, there are some fees there that the step will easily reimburse you for. And, you know, travel is going to come back. That's reimbursable. But if you need more help and you reach that point where you're going to have to do something that you need more help with, with the commerce team, reach out to your small business development centers. If you don't know the resources, your 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 commerce team doesn't. They know they know who they are because they all are there to help you succeed. And I did it. I mean, I'm a small town girl from Kentucky, <laughs> and I you know it's it's not hard. And today, 30 years ago, there was no phones, there was no faxes. You 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 had to get in the car and travel to a customer. That's 30 years ago. We're still here. It's so much easier today and exporting is huge. When you think of how many people are in the world, there's a huge market out there and this is our window right now. We're looking at each other and you could be in Australia, you could be in Canada, you could be in Mexico and I could be sitting here pitching you a grill topper and that's exciting. So don't waste time. Give your teams a call and apply for the step grant. That's really great. Thank you. And now, Eddie, um, I'm going to ask you the same thing. You have the privilege of, of, of being responsible for this beautiful program. What <laughs> advice would you offer? Wow, that is um, just simply incredible advice. And I congratulate both of you. And as you can see, the main example and the best advice I would tell anybody listening to this is that there's no one path to exporting. You could see that it was accidental or in on purpose the STEP program, and there's a whole menu of services. See what I did there, Stacy. There's a whole menu of services <laughs> that are available to be reimbursed by the program. Um, so, and, and, and we're not done with the list of everything that Deborah and Stacy covered at one point may not have been covered. So if you visited the STEP program in the past, revisit it. The allowable activities are always expanding, and that is based on what we hear from you, the business owner, and what your needs are. And that is how the program is being directed and guided. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, having worked with hundreds of companies that went from new to exporting to incredible export success, and they can pinpoint exactly the point, and usually it'll come back to something that the STEP program does, because what is unique about this program is that we put our money where our mouth is. And that's the best I could tell you. It's a free, it's a free application, 
and it's a grant, so it doesn't have to be paid back. And we'll we'll right there with you and join the network of export support system that exists within your community. That is very, very key. Amazing. Thank you, Eddie. So Deborah, Stacy, thank you so much for sharing today. Uh, audience, you've heard about the state trade expansion program. We're going to tell you more about our trade finance portfolio in the next session. But again, just thank you for for sharing all of your great advice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And we're back. Uh, our last panelist talked about the state trade expansion program, and now I want to delve into our trade finance program. Uh, there are a lot of options out there, and we have two wonderful companies who are going to talk to you about their experiences. Kathleen O'Haren, she's the founder and CEO of Jinx Production in Yarmouth, Maine, and they do wonderful work. We're also joined by Bob Miltenberger. He is the CEO and founder of Nearshore Networks in Houston, Texas, and he's going to share their important work in offshore communications. And Dan Pache from Team SBA, National Director of Trade Finance. So thanks to the three of you for joining today. And I'll begin with you, Kathleen. Can you tell us about Jinx and how you got into exporting? Hi, sure. Uh, thanks for including me on the panel today. I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about Jinx Productions and how we got started in the exporter world and how the SBA has helped, uh, helped the business to grow. Um, so Jinx Productions is an international video production company. We produce documentaries for international network television, and we produce videos for organizations and brands across the globe. We uh, have always been an exporter. Our first uh, clients were German-speaking clients, and so I built a team of German speakers uh, to be able to produce content that would suit their needs, and that just sort of grew. Um, now we produce uh, for network television and for uh, companies who do business in Germany and German companies who want to do business here. Um, I never really thought of ourselves as uh, exporters until the um, Maine SBA awarded us the Exporter of the Year Award in 2019, and that changed my mindset, and I was able to see us as an exporter. Congratulations. Exporter of the Year is a real honor. Uh, hey, Bob, can you tell us about Nature Networks and your own exporting experience, why you got into it? Yes, and thank you for having us. We're always happy to support the SBA and spread the word on the programs that are out there and available to business owners, large and small. So we founded Nearshore Networks Global from the start. The idea was to not be constricted to working just within the domestic market. So our outpost model took us to Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Europe, etc. And so as we grew, the natural reach was to look for some supportive funding, and that landed us in the SBA, where um, much to our surprise and pleasure, it's been a wonderful source of capital and has helped fuel our growth across all the countries. So Exporter by Design uh, did not know there was exporter funding. Uh, similar to Kathleen, we were blessed with an award of Exporter of the Year in 2020 by SBA, and we're just rolling along and rocking, so happy to share any of our experience with everyone here. So you both took advantage of SBA's export loans. Um, can you explain how these loans helped your business and particularly the bottom line, which is what a lot of the audience cares about? Why don't we start with you, Kathleen? Sure. Um, first of all, we used uh, a few of the STEP grants. Um, after we won the award, I was put in touch with some SBA representatives, and that was one of the first things they started talking about was the STEP grants and how I could use those to help create um, localized uh, localized online presence over in Germany um, and how I could initiate some marketing and PR campaigns over there. Um, and so I started out with that. And then I learned about some of the Exporter Express loans. Um, and I was needing to um, purchase some equipment for some production work that we were going to be doing. We'd won a big bid and I needed to spend a lot of money and I didn't really want to spend all my own money. And so the exporter uh, fixed term loan was really helpful for that. Um, and I also um, I also used the or applied for the line of credit 
um, in order to have a nice big chunk of uh, money available whenever I needed to start a larger project that had kind of a longer lead before we'd start uh, getting billing paid back. That's really great. Interesting. Glad you used it for that working capital need. And um, how about you, Bob? Well, we started with the Export Express because it was an, an easier product to become involved with. Uh, as a company with no history and starting out with a concept, we did our due diligence. But in the third year, we validated the market and said, OK, we need X dollars to get us started and funded. So the Export Express loan gave us that same line of credit Kathleen's referring to. It's very easy, very low uh, paperwork if you want to be concerned about that to get involved and fit our needs. And then over time, we've taken two different courses. One, transitioning from a, a local lender to a regional lender. And the third step is about to become more of a national lender who can fulfill more of our loan and line of credit needs on a, a grander scale, if you will, as we grow. The, uh, the secondary step that I was referring to was the fact that we started out and in a very conservative posture. And so as an entrepreneur, your natural instinct is not to overextend when in fact, if you have a good concept, you need to extend. So we got the encouragement from SBA and their counseling through the years. So that, that's what's moved us somewhat up the scale of the products into the international trade loan now. Wow, terrific. So it sounds like it was able to grow with your business as you go and hopefully yeah. with you too, Kathleen. Um, so uh, we get into the National Small Business Week. You're such very successful businesses yourself. How about your advice for others? Um, so, you know, based on your experience, Kathleen, what advice would you offer about to businesses about taking advantage of SBA resources? I found it to be um, much easier than I thought. Um, and I would recommend getting in touch with your local SBA representatives to talk about um, the exporter, um, ex especially the exporter express options. Um, and to look at your company and think, you know, are you a, are you a small creative company like we were? Are you in fact an exporter already? <laughs> it could be the case. You know, so that makes things a little bit easier. But like Bob said, the paperwork wasn't a big deal. I didn't have a lot of time to devote to writing up uh, a lot of proposals and stuff. But um, it was just enough that I felt like I could I could spend some time doing that and still uh, manage the business the way that I needed to. Um, everybody was really helpful, you know, and don't be afraid of the international side of things there um, almost everywhere you go there's English speakers that'll help you. Fantastic super helpful how about the same for you Bob what what, what advice for small businesses as they you know tap tap help in exporting? Yeah and it has to be as Kathleen encouraged you cannot be afraid or be daunted by stories you may have heard from other folks uh, on how difficult it was to work with SBA maybe in the past that is not the case now the the machine works it's easy to enter from one of two ways, reaching out to your local SBA representative who are always very good counselors by trade and can describe the product sets or going through your local lender to first determine if they are an SBA qualified lender. And if not, there's no harm in going to other lenders because the SBA program is, there's a continuity there, regardless of who you're working with, the product sets are very easily understood. and. Uh, it is not as daunting a process. Uh, you'll know the information because you're running your business. So it's not like you have to go and find it. Really, thank you. That's that's great to hear. So to conclude, uh, Dan, you're a former banker and now you're heading SBA's trade finance group. What, what, what advice would you offer to these small businesses to grow globally? Thank you, Michelle. Um, and it's, it's really nice to hear about uh, Bob and Kathleen's story, because I think it does such a good job of highlighting the cross-section of small businesses that are involved in international trade. You have Bob's company, which is focused on export from the beginning. It was designed into the fabric, whereas Kathleen came across it by opportunity, so much so that she actually found out she was an exporter a year after the fact. But that's really the nature of small business, right? It's, it's dynamic and it's changing. And one of the things I liked about Bob's story was actually his growth, the fact that as his company grew you know, with intent and with design, 
that so too did his needs and that there are there's a huge network of resources available to small businesses at the local level and at the national level that's there. It's spread out, it's challenging, but I don't think challenge is anything new to small businesses. It's really about finding that that starting point and that connection. And I really think SBA and the Office of International Trade is, is a great resource in that regard. We highlighted the range of products, even on even in this discussion. STEP and the grant funding that can be available early on. Export Express, a very flexible loan product that can support a variety of needs. Kathleen highlighted the need for equipment to, to produce uh, videos and the need for working capital, which can help on onboard new opportunity and take advantage of uh, new projects. The international trade loan program that Bob mentioned is great for supporting broader capital purchases. So there's a range of solutions inside of the broader SBA portfolio that's really available to help small businesses. I think my takeaway comment of everything is really the need to be proactive, that opportunities come up that you can't always prepare for them and that you need to be doing what you can to manage for that upcoming opportunity such that you are in a position to take advantage of it when it presents. It's better to have the financing lined up and have that conversation with your lender ahead of time before that contract is in your hand or then you're trying to scramble. Every small business owner knows how busy their, their day is and how many ver different tasks that they're engaged with. Having your financing in place ahead of time is an excellent way to be able to seize upon opportunity when it presents. So with that, Michelle, those are my banker comments, and I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful, Dan. It's great to have your banker comments now on, on the SBA side. Uh, you know, really fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing such great advice and 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 your growth trajectories through exporting. Really appreciate it. Uh, so what we're going to do next for the audience? Don't we don't want to lose you? We're going to next move on to trade policy with a company, West Africa Shop. More exciting stuff, so please stay tuned. Welcome to our final segment. You heard from the last panelist about SBA's trade finance program, and before that, the state trade expansion program. And now we want you to learn about our international affairs and trade policy program, the practical services that we provide through the international trade hotline, as well as how we represent small businesses in international trade agreements and trade policy. So again, you're not gonna take it from me, you're gonna hear from a wonderful, successful small business, Major Clemens, who is the founder of the West Africa Shop. It's an e-commerce platform and a two-way trading company. And I'm also really pleased to introduce Sarah Bonner, Senior Trade Policy Advisor with the SBA. Major, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us about the West Africa shop and you know how you built this e-commerce platform serving both West Africa and diaspora in the United States? Sure. Uh, so uh, I am a Liberian American. Uh, so uh, I've been here for over 30 years and my business is based in Clarksburg, Maryland. Um, as I've traveled over the years back and forth to Liberia uh, and saw a lot of my friends move back to Liberia to live, uh, we noticed that there was a break in trade. You know, we couldn't just shop at Amazon or Target or Walmart from Liberia. So uh, I decided to open the online platform that would help bridge that gap. Uh, so our platform, we view it as a kind of a permanent trade mission but it's uh, it allows uh, customers in West Africa to shop easily on Target, Amazon, and Walmart, and their purchases come to us. We package it and we send it to the customer in West Africa as if uh, they're ordering within the U.S. Um, we've uh, <laughs> Our trade mission has has helped a lot of people uh, kind of stay connected to their shopping needs here in the uh, in the U.S. And uh, we've been growing ever since and uh, trying to grow more and uh, grow throughout West Africa. Um, so I know you met Sarah by reaching out to the Inter SBA's International mm -hmm. Trade Hotline. Love to sort of hear why you reached out, what you were hoping to get out of it, and whether or not it was helpful. Oh. Well, it, it's first and foremost, it's been beyond helpful, but uh, I met Sarah because I cold call and cold email a lot just for information. 
And uh, she was able to contact me back. Uh, we had a very great conversation. And then um, she just began providing me with information. And all this was during 2020. So, you know, there was a lot of time in the house, a lot of time to uh, refigure your business and, you know, just grow your business differently. So I really took advantage of uh, the information SBA was able to send to us as far as policy, as far as uh, reaching out to other experts. Um, it, it really helped a lot. That's great. And um, we also offer what we call a fast track service. Um, and I think we, uh, we, we, we bridged you, introduced you to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Uh, can you explain a little bit about, you know, how helpful it was? You started with SBA, then we introduced you to FDA. Um, you know, how did that help you? And would you recommend it to other small businesses too? Oh, yes, definitely recommend it. Um, so 2021, our trade mission grew and we began importing natural African made products to the U.S. And um, I asked Sarah, I called Sarah one day and asked her several questions and she ended up setting up the, the meeting with the FDA. And one of the best things about the meeting with the FDA is there were multiple experts on the call, which kind of addressed all of my questions from, you know, serious to questions someone would consider a dumb question, which they, you know, they all addressed every question and really explained everything. And as a small business, you, the access to an expert can change things. So. Um, it was it was a very great call. The information they gave me uh, changed our business strategy on some things. Um, and uh, I would recommend any business that has the time to uh, set up those meetings with the FDA. They're very uh, beneficial. Well, well, you're you know, by being on on this event, this call, you're really an inspiration to a lot of small businesses. And I wonder, like in more generally, do you have particular business advice? Um, besides being resilient and, um, and actually be hands on, uh, I know for, for me, our business, uh, our business really expanded as we went back and forth to different countries within West Africa, meeting different vendors, actually face to face and seeing how their processes go as well as, uh, here in the U S those hands on, if you can, those hands on experiences allow you to uh, learn your customer better, um, allows me to ask Sarah better questions <laughs> um, and overall grows the business. So I'd say resilience and kind of uh, don't be afraid of a hands on experience with the customer. It's also our we uh, this is a great example of our work under an initiative called Prosper Africa. Mm -hmm. The idea that trade, you know, particularly through collaborating with U.S. diaspora communities, trading with Africa, you know, the continent benefits, the U.S. economy benefits um, and trade sort of lifts all ships. Uh, you know, I'd be really interested in knowing, have you been able to plug into the broader Prosper Africa initiative and what was that experience? Yes, uh, yes, we have. Uh, we plugged into Prosper Africa through West Africa Trade Investment Hub. Um, we've spoken with several AGOA experts. Uh, we've met other companies within different countries that uh, that provided natural products that we might have been looking for or are looking to partner with. Um, Prosper Africa has actually been a centralized place to get small business information about Africa. So uh, for for us in particular, we we've enjoyed talking to their Goa experts. We've enjoyed asking them questions. We've um, we kind of ask them questions a lot, <laughs> but but it's 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 been a great resource and I would encourage anybody else to use it as well because we we at West Africa shop, we definitely use their expertise a lot to um, to just figure out what's going on. That's great. That's great. Uh, so, so Sarah, 
<laughs> We've heard a lot about you. We haven't heard from you. <laughs> Clearly, you've got a lot of good advice to offer small businesses and have been invaluable to Major Clemens in the West Africa shop. But uh, can you, you know, bring us home with your advice to small businesses and how to take advantage of expertise resident from the SBA? Well, there's just so many programs that the U.S. government provides, and there's a lot of programs for U.S. exporters and traders. And um, calling the hotline can really help small businesses to connect to understand what's out there for them. Small businesses really don't have a lot of time to um, find all the different programs, understand them, and find the right expert. And so it's really a privilege to connect them and help them to quickly identify what would potentially make most sense for them. And a great place for people who want to get started on their own is to look at sba.gov forward slash trade tools. A lot of the advice we give is there. It's a 24-7 platform with information on e-commerce, <clears throat> regulations, federal government programs, and where to get one-on-one -on -one assistance and training. Um, to take the next step, small businesses can just email international at sba.gov or call our toll-free hotline at 855-722-4877. Uh, me and our team really love getting these calls, and it is really inspiring to pe meet people like Major, and it really does make the work so enjoyable. So thanks, Major, for the chance to work with you. No problem at all. <laughs> Well, thanks to you both, and thanks for such an inspirational end to SBA's international trade segment uh, for National Small Business Week, and particularly thanks to those of you who joined us and listened in. And if we're going to ask you to do one thing based on your participation in this, reach out to us. Just ask for help. So again, thank you very much for helping us celebrate National Small Business Week. Thank you for all that you do, and we look forward to connecting with you. Hi, folks. It's great to be here today. Thanks for inviting me to join you during Small Business Week to talk about a key segment of America's small businesses, the wonderful men and women who keep our homes running, who save the day when disaster strikes and turn our home dreams into reality, America's home pros. I'm Oshin Hanrahan and I'm the CEO of Angie, formerly Angie's List. We are one of the largest marketplaces connecting home service businesses with consumers, homeowners, and renters who need help with projects of all sizes across the home. We believe that home is the most important place on earth. And we are on a mission to help people love where they live. We could not do that without the millions of pros who make up these small businesses. As the CEO of a leading home service marketplace, which supports small businesses and helps them grow, I am particularly honored to have the opportunity to talk to you today and to give voice to our wonderful pros. These men and women, these wonderful folks, America's home service pros are plumbers, painters, cleaners, carpenters, electricians, masons, contractors, and more. And these folks, our pros, represent some of the smallest businesses in our country. Local home pros are often sole props or one and two person operations serving big cities, the suburbs and rural America. Everywhere there is a home, there is a network of small businesses that support that home and that homeowner. Earlier in my career, and what got me started on a path to where I am today, I bought a small building in need of massive renovations. It was a big fixer upper, much bigger than I thought, and while the project turned out to be a success, it was in large part due to the pros, the wonderful craftspeople who helped turn this from a mess into an asset. Working with them day in and out, I began to truly understand their businesses, what they did, and how the market was not serving them as best it could. Last year, as the COVID-19 pandemic came to the States, we spent a lot more time at home began to understand how important our homes truly are. Our homes kept us safe and secure. They became the place where we worked, we ate, went to school, exercised, and more. And as you would expect, with all that time at home, home pros were in demand. From fixing things as we increased the wear and tear, to helping us adjust our spaces to best fit our new lives. 
I personally grew my family from, uh, I had a one-year-old at the beginning of uh, the, the pandemic. We ended the pandemic or are nearly at the end of the pandemic with a two and a half year old, which is a lot harder to contain and a, and a five month old who, uh, who doesn't take up much space, but makes a lot of noise. So my, my home had to adjust during the pandemic. And for our pros to be able to respond to this demand and our needs as homeowners, our pros needed to be deemed essential. We knew we could help with this and immediately went to work advocating for these small businesses to ensure they will be able to work throughout the lockdown. Thankfully, most cities and states recognize the essential services provided by America's home pros. We also knew how difficult it was for pros to get through the pandemic uh, in terms of cash flow and liquidity. We advocated for pros to access PPP loans and EIDL loans from the US Small Business Administration and the federal government uh, to make sure they could keep the lights on until the market and demand turned around. We again went to work advocating for these small businesses and working with our US senators from our home states to ensure the smallest of small businesses would have equal access to these essential funds. Home pros and the businesses they run are strong and resilient but needed and will continue to need support from local, state, and federal government. After the initial shock and decline in work caused by COVID, demand for work around the home maintenance, repairs, and home renovations skyrocketed, which for these small businesses was both a blessing and a curse. We saw some positive things like rapid response from pros to the pandemic, adoption of technology, and people shift spend into the home. It was truly impressive how pros responded to the impact of the pandemic. Just a few weeks into the pandemic, by mid-April 2020, over 90% of pros had already instituted some form of safety protocol to protect both their teams and their customers. And this year, pros have been responding to continued demand, especially as real estate sales took off and people began buying and selling their homes again. There have also been significant challenges for these small businesses. Supply shortages hampered work as global supply chains were disrupted and demand for materials caused further shortages. And the pandemic has made existing labor shortages much worse. We recently surveyed home pros across the country and about 77% think the labor shortage in home trades is worsening. To make this even more challenging, tradespeople are aging rapidly. The average age of both electricians and plumbers, electricians and plumbers, is 43 years of age, 11% older than the general population. For first-line supervisors of the construction trades, which could include things like handymen, contractors, the median age is 47, 24% higher than the general population. More than a quarter of home tradespeople are within 10 years of the Social Security retirement age, 62. As the workforce is aging, we're also seeing that people are opting into the trades and these jobs much later in life. A majority of current tradespeople said they joined trades between the age of 16 and 20, and only one fifth joined between 25 and 30. However, today, for people now entering the trades, this ratio is flipped. One third of pros say they are joining between 25 and 30 and less than 10% say they are joining between 16 and 20. America's young adults are not choosing home trades as their career. For those of us close to trades and small businesses, we know the opportunities are large. These are great trades and people can build amazing careers, build incredible companies and be highly entrepreneurial and feel amazing satisfaction with their work. The trades have a wide range of work options higher than average salaries and the opportunity for promotion and wage growth as older workers retire and particularly compelling and a, and a particularly compelling value proposition, tremendously high job satisfaction. Job satisfaction in the trades is exceptionally high. When I hear these stats, they always surprise me, but nine out of 10 pros are either very or somewhat satisfied with their work. The largest source of happiness in skilled trades and home services is driven by deep, sincere thoughts and feelings of what their chosen vocation means. Skilled tradespeople 
great meaning and value as their number one reason for happiness with their career choice, outranking pay by nearly two to one. This connection to the meaning and value of the work is such a unique characteristic of these small businesses, especially during a time when the value and importance of our homes has grown and we're in the midst of a labor adjustment like the Great Resignation. This presents a huge opportunity for these small businesses to take one of their biggest challenges, the labor shortage, and really flip it on its head and drive more people to the trades than ever before. In order to do this, we need to change the perception of home trades. Long gone are the days of disconnected, technologically lagging pros, only working off landlines and running their business on pen and paper. Instead, these small businesses are embracing technology. They're highly advanced, incredibly savvy, and very entrepreneurial. We're doing a disservice to ourselves by continuing to let the stigma around blue collar work or trades continue. I grew up outside the United States and living in Europe taught me some important lessons about how cultures can approach, how different cultures can approach trades work. Instead of assigning a cultural stigma throughout Europe, home trades are seen for their craft and tradesmen and women are seen as crafters and artisans. Small businesses are the backbone of America. Running Main Street, building things, and keeping our homes working. And this small business week, we challenge everyone to rethink their relationship with the small home trades and begin to change the narrative. Get to know these local small businesses. Be a vocal patron, just like you would your local coffee shop. Advocate for them online and in your community. Get to know their needs. Be influential. Encourage America's youths to get interested in home trades and value these careers. We all have a part to play to support our home pros, these small local businesses this week and beyond. Thank you very much.